morning, folks. Welcome back to another episode of the Liverpool Complete Playthrough. It's me, Dr. Benji FM. And you join us after what was a disappointing out outing last time out against Tottenham Hotspur. A 3-1 defeat in that one. You might remember it was, the, it was the revenge of Daniel Sturridge. I say revenge. I mean, we sold him and he scored. Is that, is that revenge? I'm not sure. Um... I guess we decided he wasn't good enough, and then he came back and haunted us. Uh, we, we gave them a win there, gifted them a win, and now Southampton at Anfield, never an easy game. And uh, I think some changes are going to have to be made. I was looking at the team just before we started to record this one, and uh, if you look at the recent form of some of our players, most notably probably Adam Lallana, a 6.64 for an attacking player, not good at all. Mane and Coutinho have fallen way off the pace as well, both playing... Really, really, really average, uh, you think, so far this season. And they're two players you want to see more from. So as we head towards the Southampton game in midweek, it's a Wednesday night kickoff um, in December, so it's going to be a cold affair. Southampton up in third place. Never easy, as mentioned, playing Southampton. Um, and, and a game, really, that we have to win. It'll put us on 30 points, bring us right behind Southampton, and it'll give us every chance of, of getting into the Champions League as this, uh, as this season goes on. Do we make attacking changes is the question. We've brought in a player like Chiesa on big money. I think that's the kind of player that we definitely start today. We have Mane one side, Chiesa the other. I might go for two wingers. The question remains, though, what do we do with Coutinho? Is he the problem um, or is Firmino the problem? That's the that's the situation. Is it that Firmino is having opportunities and not finishing them and it's, it's meaning Coutinho is having a worse game because of that? Or is Coutinho, frankly, not performing enough? As uh, Javier Pastore continues to be the best signing I've ever made. Oh, wait, no, he's not. I've got to send him to the specialist. He's got a dislocated shoulder. So he's going to miss the cup final against Spurs. Well, the semi-final, sorry, against Spurs. Um, at least one of those games, you sus suspect. He might be back for the second leg. I mean, and what do we do? I mean, now that Pastore injury means that there's no option to bring him in for Coutinho. Do we keep Coutinho in there just playing his normal game? <sighs> it's, it's difficult, right? Southampton today, then. Let's take a look at this, then. Let's go through a few things. The other question mark, of course, rests on the shoulders of Dijon Lovren, who had a very poor game last game. Um, once this move to China, morale is poor. I think in the January, we kind of looked at centre-backs before. If it's now a situation where he wants to leave, he's valued at 18 million. If, if, if one of these Chinese clubs comes in with, let's say, 30 million, then he's going to be gone. We'll replace him. I've not got an issue with it. The question mark, though, is what we do for this game. And I think bringing in Clavan, who by and large has had a solid enough season for us, he's left-sided, he, he does... He does a decent job, you know. He's left-sided. I think that's the, that's the big perk for me. He's left-footed, which gives us a bit more balance. Um... Saeed's not played that well either, actually. No, no, like, the team in general, although they've been winning, aren't playing that well. You look at Moreno, who every time he's played, has done all right. Recent form's good as well, so he's playing well. Do we bring him in for a change at left-back? I think, do you know what? We'll give Moreno a chance today. Put him in there, slot him in there. And I'm going to do the same for Wijnaldum. I think I'm going to give him the start ahead of Emre Shan, who, again, is another player that's having an OK season, but isn't excelling in necessarily the way I was expecting him to. Um... Everyone else will keep out there. I think we'll do that other change as well. Sorry, Lalana to come off then. Keita to go out there to play as a winger on that left-hand side. We'll just see with these two attacking outlets on either side now. Coutinho behind Firmino. Will it bring something about? The midfield change as well. A lot more athletic now. I like Shan. He's, he's, a, he's an imposing figure in the centre. But Wijnaldum's slightly more mobile. So we'll see how we get on. Uh, Southampton looked to be playing a 4-3-3 of sorts. Of course, Gabbiadini joined in the January. But on this game we're playing here, he's already at Southampton and has already played the start of the season. That could be a good factor or a big factor into why they're doing so well in the league this year. As we continue forward, then you can see Charlie Austin actually is going up front for them. Uh, so far this season, three goals from eight games for Charlie Austin. Gabbiadini, as I mentioned, on that right-hand side. So far, only two goals from ten games. So not having that bigger impact. Talic on the left, Classy and Davis in the middle. Um, Romeo just behind with Van Dijk and Caceres uh, in the middle of Cedric and Bertrand, Fraser Forster, of course, in goal. And some uh, danger men off the bench as well. Jay Rodriguez is there. Buffal, you've got Redmond, as well as James Ward-Prowse. So game changes for them. We've, we've got a decent bench as well, though, of course. Lalana, Origi there. So things can change if needs be. Um, this is a bit of a rotated side, though. Very mixed. Of course, with the de December coming, you've got to try and keep those legs fresh as well, especially around that Boxing, uh, boxing Day time. We're kind of already planning for that with this sort of rotation. So... Let's see how we get on. Southampton, can we bounce back after what was a very poor performance against Spurs? As uh, Oh, look at that. Look how nice the, the lines are. Someone's painted them beautifully at Anfield. Credit to them as they come out of the tunnel then. Um, I don't know. I think this is going to be interesting. Southampton, again, having a very, very good year. 
And against the better sides generally, we've done okay. But against sort of Watford, for example, we faltered. Now, I wonder if Southampton are kind of that sort of team, rather than this Manchester United or Arsenal, Chelsea, a team where we can spring counter-attacks. I don't know how we'll do if we're fully in control of the game. As uh, early stages here, 25 minutes gone. No highlights to speak of. This might be a shorter video than normal. As Coutinho gets the opportunity to put a corner in, as the snow comes down, goes all the way to the back post. Well, no, Van Dijk's fouled Mane. It, I don't know do, what happened there. Should we take a look at that again in a slightly slower um, way as the ball's put into the middle then at this back post? You can see Mane there. Does he get fouled? Does he just sort of fall to the ground? I mean, but there's, there's a pushing motion from Virgil van Dijk. I assume that's what it's been given for. And. Um, well, yeah, we'll we'll have some of that, I think, won't we? All right, let's go back to live. Who's stepping up for us? Wijnaldum is the man taking this penalty kick. Not necessarily my first choice, but I clearly haven't sorted it out. So we'll see how he gets on. We don't have that many like set piece specialists or free kick takers. So I guess Wijnaldum is probably one of the better options. Fraser Forster moving his arms up and down in goal. Wijnaldum steps up. Wijnaldum scores. Great penalty kick into the bottom corner. Half an hour or so gone then. Liverpool take the lead. We're a little bit of fortunate circumstances. It looked like a little push, but not not the worst thing I've ever seen. As uh, Fraser Forster goes the, well, he goes the right way, but a little bit too late. And we go 1-0 up. So Liverpool 1, Southampton 0. And so far, so good. A clean sheet is what I'm looking for today. As uh, another corner's put in, actually. Henderson. I think I've put this a little bit too quick. We'll slow it down just a touch. Henderson, another ball back into the middle. Uh, Keita's there. Brings it down. Oh, straight into the back of the net. Keita with the finish. Henderson, the corner wasn't that good, but the second delivery, far better. And all of a sudden, we go into half time looking like we're going to be 2 0 in the lead. Let's look at this again from the reverse angle then. The ball comes back out to Jordan Henderson. The right foot delivery wasn't so good. The left foot one, far better. Keita, no one uh, closing him down or putting a tackle in. I think that's Van Dyke again with poor defending, in all honesty. And um, Keita gets his goal. Well, there we are then. Maybe one more highlight before the half ends as well. Is there going to be any added time? A minute that remains. And uh, it's with us in a deeper position. Clavan just sort of launches the ball up there with no thought, it didn't look like. I'll also put it that way. As we, uh, as we come forward, Henderson on it again. He's got Firmino making that run. Oh, no, he didn't play it through. Wijnaldum back on it. Coutinho. I mean, these changes seem to have worked so far. As Keita gives it to Henderson. He's about 25 yards out. Henderson with a strike on goal. And Henderson into the back of the net. Supplies in the first half. Well, in the, for the second goal. And then scores the third. Great finish. 3-0 at half time. I mean, the reply after the, what was a really poor Spurs game has been fantastic. What a reply. We changed some personnel around. And Henderson having a great impact on the game. Fraser Forster must do better. But who cares? I don't care. So there we go. 3-0. <laughs> I mean, what do you say at half time? It's going fantastically well. I think I'll just calmly say I'm very pleased with the performance. Keep it going, as they seem to like that a lot. Standard fluid, doing the trick. Sometimes I think with football manager, I mean, just pause this. I think I sometimes overcomplicate football manager and try and do too many things. You can see so far five instructions, nothing too erratic, retaining possession, trying to exploit the flanks with the overlap and just exploiting the flanks, of course, playing a little bit wider than normal, giving the, the players in the middle a little bit more space. That's really all it is. Like, we're not trying to do anything too fancy. And I play the reason I play in standard is I like to mid manage. I think if you've watched my saves before, obviously I cut them up normally, so you don't always see me changing it from standard to, to defensive, to control, to attacking to whatever else that's generally how i manage i don't like to have like a system and because then if it breaks i feel like oh no i don't know i don't know how to fix this this is my only sort of system i've got whereas if you keep it on standard you get the option to change things around a little bit and that's what's then again why i put a lot of fullbacks on automatic because then it changes the way they play the game uh, as you go through a 90 minutes so yeah so far so good this is probably the point where southampton come back and make this look stupid but um if it's working at the moment, there's no need to try and fix it. We may well be on for a fourth here as we come forward again. Henderson plays it back into Coutinho, who again, has got, we've got so much space. You can see the way we're set up there. Wijnaldum, ball through to Alberto Moreno, who's on the pitch today. Into Firmino, headed on goal, forced it with a save. But again, a good move from us. And you can see from that attacking move. In fact, let's just look at that again in a 2D. We're going to do a little bit of analysis. I, I, don't, I hope you like this sort of thing. So as the ball comes forward here, and the way in which we attack. Like, you, you look at that. They've got one guy up front, very, very isolated. Both fullbacks pushed really far on. And actually, like, we're not playing either of them as in, inside forwards, but they're acting a little bit like this. Coutinho has the ball in the middle. And then you've got, obviously, Henderson on one side. You've got Wijnaldum on the other. There's a nice, there's a lovely balance to the side. You could arguably have Henderson and Wijnaldum playing a little bit deeper. But the way that the fullbacks are pushed up, because we're looking for the overlap and exploiting the flanks, we've got so much space in these areas. And as we just let this roll on then, you can see Wijnaldum, all of a sudden, as the ball goes through, 
We've got a 2v1 on this side. We've got Klein still sort of occupying that guy back there. And Henderson almost becomes a free man in the middle because as the ball comes across, there's so much focus on Moreno's ball coming in that um, Firmino manages to find himself a little bit of space as well. And as you see there, the way it stops, all of a sudden, we've got five bodies in the area. Henderson on the edge. If the ball's knocked out, when Aldum's there as well, we've got just a 2v1 up top. So we're not in any danger of being counter-attacked from this position as long as Klein gets back quickly. Like, the, like Moreno and Klein occupy their, their defenders so much that we've got so much time and options and so many options to do things in offensive areas so there you are then a little bit of tactical chat there as we uh, we'll go back to 3d but there you are i just like to see the way that develops and i like to see that especially the fullbacks push on in that way and create a problem for southampton it makes it much more difficult for southampton's fullbacks to get forwards and i think if you're a southampton fan you probably recognize as well one of your stronger areas are those fullback positions and the way that they drive forward and start attacks and help with attacks and we're doing a very similar thing with this Liverpool setup, as a lovely ball from Henderson, by the way, into Clavan. I like it when balls come in to the centre from the outside. Um, anyway, Keita cuts inside as that inside forward. He might have a chance to score here. Well, again, straight up Forster, but again, causing problems, and that gives us different options as well. Different sort of attack entirely from what we've seen before. If you've got players that are capable of carrying the ball, taking it past a man, getting a shot off, that is sort of the game winning moment you hope for. Um, so far, then, 25 minutes to go. So, 15 minutes to go. Firmino's had a quiet game so far in this one. 15 minutes, I'm, I'm not sure whether we should make some changes. We'll see what comes from this. Tadic plays the ball forward. Clavan covering really, really nicely. And uh, it finds its way all the way back out to Bertrand. Defensively, our setup's quite solid as well. Although we're playing standard, again, it's it's quite nice to see. I'm saying how <laughs> strong we are defensively. Clavan, good challenge. Oh, great strike, you've got to say. I mean, I'll give credit to the strike. Jay Rodriguez on 76 has scored an absolute banger. I think we'll react to that by going more defensive now, showing up shop just a little bit. And with that, we'll actually make a double change. We'll bring on Shan and Gruich as well, both a little bit more defensive-minded in the centre. And, uh, yeah, fresh legs in the middle, not a problem at all. We should now just be able to see this out. 50 minutes to go. I'll be happy if we see no more highlights, let's put it that way. Um, of course, we've still got the option of our, our wingers causing problems as the ball's headed all the way up to Gruich and our oh, Clavan goes close it's had a wasted opportunity at the bottom there I'd probably agree with that so we could have had four but 3-1 I said before the game it would put us a point behind them it would get us right in that mix in that top five top six and it seems to have done so as another goal comes in Clavan heads down for Joel Matip who's very very happy about it you've got to say 4-1 though at this stage, 25 shots for us in the game, 60% possession. Our pass completion percentage is 84%, which is really, really good. 87% of tackles won as well, which I like to see. Uh, and we're dominating in the air as well. An average rating for the squad at this point of 7.55, I have to say, is very, very good. Anything above 7.5 is, is meaning you're going to win this game pretty dominantly. And so the ball's played in. Mignolet claims as well. He's had a good game, apart from the wonder strike from Rodriguez. Hardly, uh, You can hardly be critical of him. As, uh, that's probably going to wrap things up then and a good win for us we don't really rise that much in the table but you can see from the league table 30 points um, now with Leap from Watford there we'll just go back to that actually if we just passionately say well done lads it was a good win for us we'll just go back to the league table you can see on this side uh, Tottenham still top of the table then Bournemouth keeping pace with them uh, both sides actually drew that game which brings us all a little bit closer together uh, Arsenal beating Everton Southampton of course being beaten by us and Manchester United drawing with Watford has given us the opportunity to leapfrog them and now we're right in this mix then the top seven very very congested in fact we'll, we'll extend that to a top eight Chelsea on 28 points it's very very tight between that and third place and uh, it should make for an exciting Christmas period we'll see where we come at the end of it then and uh, a good win for us then and if you've enjoyed this episode please do leave a like on it if you want to see more subscribe to the channel and let me know what you thought about the little tactical thing we did in the middle there did you enjoy it maybe we'll do some more of that uh, right then that brings us to the end we love with care from it's Benji until next time I'll see you again tomorrow for another episode of this uh, goodbye 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 I won't wave. I've already done it.